My Red Sea Reefer Peninsula 500 is now four years old, so today I'll show you what life with a mature reef tank is like by talking you through the five things you need to know about keeping a reef tank long term, the last of which is how much money I've spent on the tank. Just make sure you're sitting down when you get to that part of the video. First up then, what does a four-year-old reef tank look like? Well, this tank probably doesn't look like a true four-year-old tank. And you may have seen many tanks that are around two years old, but look much more grown out. And that's because I've continuously removed corals when they've grown to full-size colonies. And there are probably a dozen corals that I've bought, grown to the size of my forehead, then decided to move on. And more recently, I even removed an enormous chunk of the rockscape and completely started that part of the tank afresh. I did so because I wasn't happy with the coral choices I made, and while that means I have to stare at a bare rock for now, I'm still happy with my decision. I've replaced the corals I used to have that I found quite boring with some absolutely stunning new corals, and I've started dosing Calquasa to raise my pH and increase the rate of growth on my new corals. Now it's early days, but my alkalinity consumption tripled a month after I started dosing Calquasa, so it certainly seems to be working. And I'll be making a video all about Calquasa in the coming months, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to know how to grow your corals faster. Next up is my fish stocking. Now I currently have 16 fish in total, which I think is about right for this four foot by two foot by two foot tank. Three of those fish, a lawnmower blenny, a one spot fox face, and a white tail coal tang are in there to eat algae. And I know they work tirelessly to keep the tank clean because algae grows quite quickly in the parts they can't reach. Now from the outside, 16 fish in a tank of around 100 gallons might not seem that many. And I've actually had as many as 23 in the past, but I find it easier to control my water quality with fewer fish. And I'm generally very pleased with my fish choices, although my Halicorys rasses constantly splash water over the top of the tank, which was hilarious at first, but has become rather tiresome four years on. Now every tank should have a centerpiece fish, and the centerpiece of my tank is a copper banded butterfly. Now I've made various videos about how difficult these fish are to keep, and it's not a fish for the faint hearted, but Wesley is an absolute stunner and he draws my eye more than any other fish. And if you don't fancy the challenge of keeping something like a copper banded butterfly, I'll link a video in the top corner of the screen that suggests 17 other centerpiece fish. The third thing you need to know is the coral warfare I have to put up with. Now that's another part of why I've removed so many corals over the years, and I most recently removed an encrusting Montipora that was starting to kill everything it could get its grubby little polyps on. For the most part, when it comes to avoiding civil war, decent spacing between your corals is your friend. But I've also taken to isolating corals on their own island wherever possible, and I've started keeping encrusting corals on their own designated rocks to keep them apart and stop them from spreading. Something that really suits Cyphastria corals like this blue and green Mardi Gras Cyphastria. And these two Zoa islands prevent the fastest growing corals in my tank from taking over, although corals are clever little creatures and always find a way to escape and defy your wishes. And my utter chaos have formed a splinter cell on my main island. Little blighters. But despite my best peacekeeping effort, coral warfare still breaks out regularly, and frankly there's only so much I can do to stop that. Corals just love a good old dust up, and in many ways that natural behaviour adds to the fascination of the hobby. And while I love this tank and have no intention of upgrading anytime soon, when I do, coral growth and therefore warfare will be the number one reason. And finally, before I tell you how much I've spent on this tank, I'll talk you through how it runs. My regular subscribers love nothing more than taking the mickey out of me for how often I change my lights. Which is fair enough because I've probably had more light combinations than you've had hot dinners. But simply, I always try to have maximum light coverage, which suits my SPS corals well. The trade-off is that I haven't had a massive amount of success with LPS corals, particularly things like acans that never look especially puffy and tend to lose any rainbow colouring they start with. And that's what people mean when they say keeping a mixed reef is harder than keeping an SPS reef. Conditions that suit LPS corals don't suit SPS corals, so getting one of the two to thrive is achievable, but it will probably be at the expense of the other group sulking. In terms of float, I have two large power heads at either end of the tank, which gives me a lot of water movement, but I'd actually have twice as much in an ideal world, and I'd really like a few power heads that I can point in different directions. With so many SPS corals growing out now, I get flat spots where low flow lets detritus settle although that is mainly limited to the bottom corners of the tank. And it's only really the tricky SPS corals that need as much flow as this. LPS and soft corals are absolutely fine, swaying in gentle currents. 
In terms of filtration, I think mine is actually pretty basic for a setup like this. I have an automatic filter roller that polishes the water and removes any uneaten food, an algae refugium that helps control nitrate and to some extent phosphate, and a protein skimmer that pulls out lots of yummy fish poo. That lot does the lion's share of the filtration, although I do also use a small amount of carbon dosing to help with nitrate and phosphate. And as a Brucey bonus, the Kalkwasser also contributes to keeping my phosphate down. Now a tank like this does of course require maintenance, and I've actually made an entire video on that subject alone, which I'll link in the top corner of the screen. In short, I usually spend a couple of hours a week on regular tasks, but I could probably easily spend double that if I were a little more conscientious. And as an example, my skimmer cup only gets emptied once a month at best, when it would probably benefit from a weekly clean. But surprisingly, it doesn't give off any smell into the living room. Well, either that or I've gone nose blind. Potato, potato. But although I'm a bit lazy with maintenance sometimes, I take comfort that my tank is running well from the various monitoring equipment I have, which automatically keeps an eye on my salinity, temperature, pH, alkalinity and dosing liquids, all of which is very welcome peace of mind, and more importantly saves me a lot of time doing manual tests. And that just leaves the costs, which I've left to the end in the hope that if Mrs. Reefdot clicks on this video, she'll have got bored and clicked off by now. Don't worry, darling, it's not that bad anyway, so you might as well turn off. Is she gone? Right. When the tank was nine months old, I made a video breaking down the cost to date with a full spreadsheet. At that stage, I'd spent £11,000 and my tank looked like this. Pretty bare for five figures, I'm sure you'll agree. But I probably only kept 20% of the fish and corals in this clip, and the fact that I usually have no space for new corals doesn't usually stop me buying new corals. Now I do track my expenses on a spreadsheet, but that includes the cost of my second tank, as well as the money I spend on this YouTube channel. So I can't give you an exact cost, but a good estimate is that I've spent somewhere in the region of £10,000 a year on this tank, which gives a grand total of £41,000 since the start. But the true figure could easily be 50 k or maybe even a little more. Now I know it's a bit vulgar talking about money, and this really isn't intended as a flex, I just think if I was watching this video, I'd be interested to know. And it's also not intended to put you off. I've recently set up a tank with an initial cost of just £140. And I've done so to show you how awesome the hobby can be if you prefer to spend your hard-earned money on boring things like rent, cars and food. And of course, as well as the simple budget tank, I'll also be continuing the journey to make my main tank into the true showcase tank I want it to be. If you've got any questions, then let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until then, Happy reefing.